Hello and welcome to the second tutorial. Last time we showed you how to create three different turfs and add them to the map. Since that time, all I've done is just change how the map looks. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a basic chat system. To do this, we'll be making what's known as a verb. The verbs are what players will use to interact with your game. In other words, they are the controls, or the attacks, etc. The verb we'll be making is one that will allow you to type messages to everyone you can see on your screen. This is commonly referred to as a say verb. So before we start, I'm just going to show you, I've got this speech bubble icon here. I recommend you make one yourself before this tutorial starts, because you will be using it as part of the verb. So I start off by creating a new code file and call it chat. Now we're going to be making a verb that pertains to mobs so we're going to define it under mob to start with. If you're confused at all I'd recommend looking at the last video where we explained how to define things. On the next line type verb don't forget to indent it using tab. Then on the next line type well I'm going to type say you can type whatever you want and then finish it off with an open and a closed bracket now you can put arguments in this in the brackets and if you don't know what arguments are don't worry um, we're going to touch on that in future but don't worry about it for this tutorial so just for now just have an open and a closed bracket don't type anything in there Alrighty. On the next couple of lines, we're going to be exploring the use of set tags. The set tags are a way for you to set the behaviors for the verb. So you can set the in game name of the verb, you can set the description, you can set what tab it appears in. So we want to call an in game name of this verb speak. So type in set space name equals and then in quote marks type whatever you want to call the verb not Steve you can call it Steve if you want we're gonna call our speak then on the next line again set space category now this one will decide what tab your verb appears in so this is gonna appear in the chat tab all right are we done is that all we need to do? Let's find out. Cool, so I've created the verb. You can see it appears here in the chat tab. It's called speak. But when I click it, nothing happens. That's because I haven't done anything. I haven't told beyond what to behave like. I haven't told beyond anything. So we're not done. So go back to the code file. And on the next line, we're going to tell beyond to add a speech bubble to our character when we go to talk but not like this we're gonna use beyond code we're gonna add the speech bubble to your overlays now your overlays refers to what icons you have on top of your character so it's typically used as clothes speech bubbles uh, auras hair, stuff like that. So we're going to type user overlays or user dot overlays plus equals. It has to be plus equals. It can't just be plus or equals. It has to be both of them together. Add the icon. Remember when you add icons you use the apostrophes. Cool. I'm going to run this just to show you. Now when I click on it, you see the speech bubble appears on top of my dude. next line we're going to create the text box, the thing you type into to type your message. So type var, so well, var, var, short for variable, slash, and anything you want. Just think of it like algebra. So it can be x, it can be whatever you like, like I've written here, it can be anything, it can be msg for message. And I'm just going to use x. And now we've said variable x, variable x equals input, brackets, and then you do need to include the 
quote marks within it, or else it won't work. What we're creating is an input box in the game. I'll show you in a minute. But inside the quote marks will be the title of the window and optional text. Then at the end, space as space text. Because the input will be a text input. Now, after the chat box appears, we want to take away the speech bubble because obviously we're not typing anymore. Copy and paste the overlays line and change the plus to a minus. Cool. So when I compile it, you can see it comes up with a warning. That's because we've defined the variable x but we haven't used it. It's a little bit like asking your parents if you can use their car and they say yes and then you don't use their car. So we're going to run the game and just show you what happens. So I click on it. The speech bubble appears, the chat box appears, it has the title and the body text that we typed, and then it also has the text input. Now we can type whatever message we want in here, but because we haven't put, and this message, whatever we type, will be, will be your X's, because we haven't told X to appear anywhere, nothing will happen. So we're going to close it and go back to the text, and make some text appear when we type. On the next line, we're going to type if x, just like I have here. The if proc procedure is probably the most common one you'll use. It basically says if whatever you put in the brackets, if that is the case, then do this. So kind of like, um, or you'll see here, if x, so if I've actually typed anything, the next line will happen. If I haven't typed anything, the next line won't happen. So if x, now this isn't necessary, but I've put it in there so that if the player hasn't typed anything, it won't come up with a blank message, i.e. spam. So I put it in, and then next line and tab. And then we're gonna use the output. So type here is brackets, USR user. So what that does is refers to anyone that can hear whatever's in brackets. So anyone that can hear user will get this message. To then type there two what are they? The two greater than signs. And then type in in quotes what I'm typing here. Now the reason I'm using square brackets is anytime you're referring to a variable you need to put it in brackets. That way, it will use that variable rather than whatever you typed. So typing square brackets USR will give you the person's name rather than USR. And typing square brackets X will give you whatever the message they typed rather than just the letter X. So compile that. No errors, no warnings. Run it. You've created a speak verb. If you've got any questions about what we've gone through today, just leave me a comment in the comment section below. Or you can press the F1 and check out the DM reference. So just before we conclude, I'm going to put in these little delays just to show you the syntax, the order of operations, just so you can see step by step how it all works. So I press speak, speech bubble appears, then a second later the text box appears and now nothing will happen until I click the OK button. As soon as I click the OK button, the verb will continue. So there's a one second delay, the bubble goes, message appears. Now I'm just going to tidy up the verb, you don't have to do what I'm doing. Uh, I'd say probably your homework is to press F1, look in the DM reference and read about the IF procedure, read about the HEARERS procedure, and read about the INPUT procedure. 
that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I won't fall down your trap door.